The British had agreed to withdraw from Southeast Asia and the future of its former colonies was at stake. Northern Borneo was one of them. They had been administered by the British for decades, but for centuries before that, they were part of the Sulu Sultanate. The Sultan of these islands had long before agreed to form part of the Philippines. And now that the British were leaving, they were determined to reclaim these lands. But a year later, they became part of Malaysia instead. This caused the Philippines to break off all diplomatic ties with Malaysia. Shortly thereafter, they set up a training camp on a remote island to secretly prepare for a full-scale invasion of Northern Borneo. Were they actually going to invade Malaysia? Or would perhaps a surprise twist of fate prevent an ongoing conflict? This is the North Borneo dispute with hindsight. This story starts with the Sultanate of Brunei. The Bruneian Sultanate used to administer the entire coast of Borneo, but due to piracy, colonialism and internal strife, in the early 17th century much of their territory was already lost. Brunei was now embattled in a civil war, while his neighbor was thriving. The Sultan of Sulu was allegedly asked by the Sultan of Brunei to send reinforcements, and as the story goes, he agreed. As the civil war ended a few years later, in the favor of the Sultan of Brunei, he gifted the lands of Eastern Sabah to the Sultan of Sulu. These are some of the earliest origins of the dispute. The Sulu Sultanate now administered these lands. In the centuries that followed, they gained notoriety for its acts of piracy. They would raid the Spanish settlements in the Bisayan area, they stole goods and captured slaves, turning the Sulu archipelago into a regional center for slave trade. The Sulus used much lighter and more agile boats than the Spaniards, making it easy to outmaneuver them. But this changed when the Spaniards acquired much faster steamboats and the pirates began to lose their momentum. The Spaniards conquered some of the islands that used to belong to the Sulu Sultanate. They still administered much of Northern Borneo, but their actual influence was limited. The people here had very little loyalty for the Sultan, and other lands were effectively led by another Sultan. The Spaniards, in the meantime, tried to do something about these pirates, and they attacked the settlements that they frequently used. They eventually broke through to their capital city, and after years of war, they signed a peace treaty, in which the Sulu Sultanate was formally included into the Philippines and displaced the lands of Northern Borneo by extent within Philippine borders. But this moment is subject to debate. The peace treaty that they signed can be interpreted differently in its Spanish and in its Sulu version. And an argument can be made that the peoples of Northern Borneo never had much loyalty for the Sulu Sultan. The Sultanate, after joining the Philippines, underwent rapid changes. The Spanish abandoned the region after the Spanish-American War. The Sultan then signed a document which either leased or ceded some of the islands to the British. For this, the Sultan received a payment of 5,000 Malayan dollars per year. He later settled this ambiguity by signing another agreement confirming that he indeed ceded the lands. For this, he was paid another hefty yearly stipend. The Spaniards later took control over the Sultanate, while renouncing every claim to Northern Borneo, and the Sultan later relinquished all of his remaining political power. Now it's the mid-20th century. The Sultan lost its power in Northern Borneo. The Spaniards had left a long time ago, 
and the British were now gradually decolonizing their territories. This was an opportunity for the Philippine government to rekindle their claim. The president formally announced their claim to northern Borneo, but this was refuted by Malaysia. He based himself primarily on a study from the UN, which found that a majority of the people of Sabah expressed a wish to join Malaysia. The federation was formed shortly thereafter. But when President Marcos came into office, the conflict really heated up. Under the codename Project Merdeka, he collected his military dream team. The first phase of the mission started in the early months of 1967. Marcos sent 17 men to secretly infiltrate the Filipino communities in Sava. They posed as forest rangers, mailmen and police officers. And their goal was to convince the Filipinos living there to want to break ties with Malaysia. It was a form of psychological warfare and reconnaissance. And after a couple of infiltrations, they felt ready to prepare the invasion. They scouted several hundred young men from the south of the Philippines, almost exclusively Muslim minorities, to train at the island of Corregidor in the Bay of Manila. They received training in guerrilla operations and in jungle warfare, not knowing what they were training for. But when they learned that the objective was to invade and to reclaim Saba, a large number of army recruits deserted. The Philippine army executed many of them. This event was one of the main catalysts of the Moro conflict, which devastated much of the southern Philippines. This conflict was fueled by Malaysia, who supported the rebel groups fighting against the Philippine government. If you want me to make a separate video about this, let me know in the comments below. Well, back here at home, Sulu Sultan Jamalul Kiram III says there will be no disengagement of the forces in Sabah. At least 10 Navy ships have been deployed near the boundary of Sabah and Tawi-Tawi since the conflict began last month. The Navy intercepted two boats carrying 35 suspected followers of the Sultanate of Sulu. The dispute is still very much alive. On February 11th, 2013, small boats with a few hundred militants, some of whom armed, arrived in Sabah from Tawi Tawi. Their objective was to resolve the territorial claim to eastern Sabah, and they were sent by the descendants of the Sultan of Sulu. The standoff lasted a couple of weeks. There were attempts to solve this issue diplomatically, but in the end, the Malaysian security forces launched a major operation and flushed them out. The dispute over Sabah is still very much unresolved. Indonesia responded to forming the Federation of Malaysia in a completely different way. This video here on the left talks about the Konfrontasi. Have you heard much about this? Click on the video on the left to find out what happened.